The fake Duchess seems to be meeting with all of our heroes. First she reveals that she knows who Nostray is, and then she talks with Cormac. She has cunning, but what are her true goals? And what of the rest of our heroes on this night? What are they up to, and how is their intelligence gathering going? Last time, you guys got to explore the Masquerade more. The Sigrether got to be called out with a duelist guild. Lena got to meet an old friend and a new sorcerer. Nostra got the dirt on Miguel. And Cormac had a totally not terrible conversation, followed by a totally not terrible conversation. <laughs> so, the party has been going on. It is getting late-ish. It is probably like... 10 o'clock. The party started at dinner time. It has been raucous and fun in a very sophisticated way. People are at the point of about ready to leave, but not quite there. So, you know, that half an hour before they leave, or if you're from the Midwest, that like two hours before you start the process of leaving, <laughs> being like, well, time to go. Lena has been ferried around from person to person tonight and is just exhausted. When her mother finally stops dictating the night, it's been enough. She has said nice things about you, Lena. She's like, have fun the rest of the night. Do what you want kind of thing. Societally acceptable what you want. <laughs> that is what you can do. It is a very small list. She's hoping mostly you go flirt with one of the gentlemen you danced with earlier. Though Lena is not interested in any of them. Unless she is. <laughs> not that I'm aware of. Cool. Don't have a mark of situation. No. No one of the rows is just sitting there. <laughs> At this point, when Lena's had a minute to detox, uh, Miguel comes up to her. Uh, his clothes look very nice. They are very expensive. They look new. They looked freshly cleaned, pressed. I don't know if they had pressing back then. I don't know when irons existed. They do now. I don't know when the irons were made. It looks very, very put together. He has the splash of color for his house colors. Everything looks in place. He still has that stupid mustache that does not work, but he's trying really hard. So, have you been having a good night, Lena? I was, but then uh, this think of you came over. <laughs> we know you have no accounting for taste. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me about the Vanessa? Why would you want to know? Like, What do you mean why would I want to know? That was like my best friend! Last time we talked, or the first time we talked when you were in the city, you were just kind of like, hey, I I have to process not being dead, get out of my room. Yeah, that one's fair, but then I saw you after that. Yeah, when I invited you to this party, yeah. and then you found out about it. Exactly! That would have been a great time to be like, hey, heads up, we got married. Woo! Did, do you want to hear all about it? How, like, she was devastated that you supposedly betrayed the Duke and kidnapped his daughter and then were killed by said daughter? And then she was sobbing and sad and I was there for her as someone who understood the pain of losing someone close to you? Like, I could have gone through all that, but I figured you'd just be like, oh, it's it's a lot of work coming back from the dead, too. No, I would have preferred to hear about how beautiful the wedding was. You could have kept that other part pretty short, like, hey, <laughs> we thought you were dead. We were sad. <laughs> I comforted her, and then we got married. Yes, we were definitely sad. We got married. The wedding ceremony was beautiful. Mother cried. It was a great time all around. About as good of a feast as we had here, which is saying something since this is kind of a big deal. I noticed. I noticed. Mama and Papa put a lot of work into it. They did, and I'm glad you noticed and didn't just mess it up like normal. Like, Oh my god, I was not going to mess it up! I mean, last time, like, usually you start beating me with fake swords at parties when you got bored, so you know? Yes, when I was like 10. 16, but who's counting? Well, when I was 16, they were just as boring as it was when I was 10. That's because you don't understand, like, what this is about and how important these are for our family. There's a reason that one of us is now assistant to the captain of the guard. <laughs> <laughs> and one of us is in a bakery. You're right. One of us got screwed over. 
You both give each other pointed looks. As they can, can I, can I interrupt? Is that okay? Yes. Okay. So as you guys are, um, as they're like, have, as there's that like awkward pause as they both just stare at each other, uh, Nyostra just kind of like looms out of the shadows that he had been standing in. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> he still has that mask on and just kind of like walks between them, like dramatically looking between them. Oh. Why do I feel like a story's about to happen? <laughs> Nyostroy uh, looks over at him and goes, One, there is always a story about to happen, and two, don't interrupt the narrator. <laughs> or the narrator might not favor you, huh? And he, like, slaps him on the cheek. He spills some of his wine onto his white shirt. <laughs> <laughs> He looks very upset, but does not want you to slap him again, so does not speak immediately. He, uh, Neostroy turns his back to, uh, Magdalena and Miguel and just starts talking to the crowd. Now, friends, I think this simply will not do! These siblings long have they been apart, and now they feud and bicker as if they are 16 again. So, I say to the both of you, I like this idea of what a party used to be, beating each other with sticks. Miguel! Future captain of the guard, Miguel! Best sword fighter in all this city, Miguel! Surely fighting with sticks must be something that you can do for the entertainment of all of us! Lena is staring daggers (laughs) at you, and she can't say anything, but she's like, I'm going to kill him. (laughs) He, he, you wi- can, I, I'm gonna say Lena whispers that like under her breath and you hear Miguel say back not if I kill him first <laughs> <laughs> so it brings them together <laughs> Nyostroy looks at Sigurdard and goes I assume you are carrying a sword to protect your ward um, yes I don't want anything to happen to her may I borrow it from you for a moment that does not seem like a good idea oh I assure you it is <laughs> I'm thinking, give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> now, these are no longer children. They cannot fight with blunted sticks. Surely they both have the skill to fight with true steel. But the reason I am here is to fight instead of Magdalena. So if, if you want her to fight, I'm the one that will be fighting. I do not believe her brother will kill her. Although maybe he cannot. Hmm? I could if I wanted to, but I don't want to kill my sister. Oh, well then, it must be seen! Um, and then Nyostra shouts, Cormac O'Rourke, I am looking for you! Uh, yeah, Cormac, uh... I assume you have your sword from the demonstration. Yeah, he whips it out with a flourish. May I borrow your sword? He, like, very dramatically, like, hands it to him, like, bows and hands it to him. Nyostra takes it, bows, hands it to Miguel and goes, I believe you will be needing this for our final act of the night. And uh, as Nyostroy backs up, he uh, claps his hand and a ring of fire lights around the two of them. Thunderdome! <laughs> we, this better be out in the courtyard. Yeah, <laughs> I would assume. <laughs> lights the house on fire! <laughs> Everyone's screaming, no, no, it's for a good reason. <laughs> Lena reaches over, or... Lena puts her hand out towards Sigrether. And Sigrether will hand her the sword, I guess. And looks over at Miguel. I can still beat you even if I'm wearing something like this. Only if I let you win. All right, make me some rolls, Lena. Okay, so I am going to assume... Well, okay, I'm going to start off fighting the way like the fencing way that i was taught so um i'm gonna use finesse and athletics and you get an extra die for that's the first time using it yes Woo! i did not roll very well this time so that is one raise and three extra dice my kill did exactly the same oh you serious <laughs> <laughs> oh no he had two he only had two extra dice but still like they were pretty comparable so, how are you trying to hit him? Are you trying to cut him lightly? Are you trying to just smack him with, like, the flat of the sword? Oh, yeah. I I would say to start off, because this is still a party that she is trying to appear 
proper at. She is using like advanced fencing skills and being like a little bit flashy, but it's clearly, it's not supposed to like take him down in one shot. Um, and just like hit him with the side of the sword, I would say. Okay. So Lena lines up and does some f- f- flashy footwork and Lena is treating this as a performance, not dissimilar to how Nostra would do something. She is trying to uphold the society, even though she's being forced to fight in this. Miguel's fighting in a very practical way. He is trained to be a guard. He's not being flashy about it. So you get a hit in on his side, like hitting with the flat. But he also like, there's a lot of like, just like brute force blocking and dodging in a way that is not fencing style. And he's able to hit you a few times, but his are, he's trying to cut you a little bit more, not gravely or anything, but, you know, draw first blood kind of thing. Yeah. I would say, because I'm assuming we're going to roll again here. Yes. Uh, I would say that as soon as she notices he is using more brute force and trying to actively cut her. She's going to throw her strength behind her. She's going to... I'm going to fight with Brawn and get a little bit tougher. And then I am also going to use... Uh, now I'm going to use my fencer advantage to uh, fight with weaponry. So, like, forcefully behind... A lot more forceful behind the sword now that he's trying to hurt her more. Yep. So that's an extra die to that one too, right? I think as they're uh as they're like fighting back and forth, um Yostroy is like quickly like getting the guitar player back out <laughs> to start playing guitar as they fight. There's like a there's a loot on the ground, like he just picks up and is like, Cormac, you know how to play this, right? You're from you're from there. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing this. <laughs> And as they, uh, fight, Yostroy know, again turns to the crowd, um, and I'll say, like, every time their swords hit, it's like the fire, like, plays with that a little bit, you know, he's, like, trying to make this dramatic. As he says, now look at this. This should be the captain of the guard, yes, the second in command to keep this city safe. And yet, so far, all that he has to his advantage are his words. As he's just kind of, like, trying to, uh stir the crowd a bit against Miguel, you know. So that's ten. That's ten. Okay, so uh, three raises and a dice left over. All right. Miguel is upset and not doing well. You are a very skilled sword fighter. You're very good at what you do. Miguel has never been the expert sword fighter in the family. You are clearly starting to win. Are you trying to cut him or are you still just uh, hitting him with the flat. I am just hitting him with the flat. Uh, I am fully aware of how this looks. <laughs> yeah, so in a move that is more humiliating for him, you could end this at any time, and you are not. Like, duels often s- say stipulations. It looks like he was going for first blood, you know, to first blood, and you took him up on that, and you're like, cool, I will not make you bleed then. <laughs> and you are easily dancing around his strikes and his hits as you keep whacking him with your sword. Cool. Give me one more roll. Okay. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna say she's doing... uh, I'm gonna say that she's doing the same thing. Oh, well, would it make... I guess it doesn't matter dice-wise, but would it make sense to use resolve as in she's, like, resolving to finish this? I can let you have that, yeah. Yeah, I, like I said, because the other thing I'm going to use is brawn. It's the same amount of dice either way, but... Yeah, I think you can use Drizzt Like She's like, she's resolute in not wanting to lose. You know, like, it's her will. You know, she's well, refusing to lose. And and she doesn't want to... She doesn't want to win by drawing blood. So she's like, I'm going to finish this now. Okay, so ten, ten, ten. Three raises. So, he also got three raises. What is your... How much do you have left over? Uh, none left over. Okay. So, he makes a desperate gambit to try to win this. And he 
does a reckless slash, and he is able to get a really good slash in, but he hits it on your side, which is one of the most padded areas on you right now with having oh, yeah. a dress and a corset and anything else that's there. So it's like, he, had this been a normal fight, like had you been wearing a shirt that he's used to dueling you in from your childhood, he would have won. But he didn't. You aren't, and he didn't. And you sweep his legs out from under him, and he's, like, on the ground, and you, like, have your sword, like, under his neck, like, we're done here? As soon as uh, she drops him, Lena steps back and holds out the sword back towards Sigrether, and she's still looking at Gelly. You know you're going to have to pay Mom and Dad back for this dress. Don't worry, I'll pay everyone back for what they are owed. And he spits on the ground and scuttles up. As soon as he uh, spits on the ground, Yostroy makes the fire burn really bright and then go out. And Yostroy, like, leans down really close to his face and goes, Normally my lessons burn. Do not forget this one or the next one will, friend. And he just, like, puts his hand on uh, Miguel's hand and he doesn't burn him but just, like, lets him feel heat. Nostra is brutal, man. Nostra has to teach hard lessons. It's the only thing he has to do. Oh. No, I like it. No no, comp- no notes. Especially because I don't want to get burned later. <laughs> <laughs> no, so he quickly, like, runs away from this upset and mad and a little afraid, you know. Like, he, you could tell he was not holding back. As he runs off, Yostroy uh, grabs Magdalena's hand and, like, raises it up and goes, Now everyone let us hear it for the best dancer in the whole ball! Never have I seen someone fight so finely in such a wonderful dress. (laughs) Lena is pulling her hand away the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) The crowd, or people there are cheering, like, politely golf clapping. (laughs) You have some people who are getting a little, who are more intoxicated, are like, Yeah, this is great! And then you have, in this, while everyone's attention is held, you have Tristan walk up. Thank you for such a marvelous performance, both Mademoiselle and Monsieur. I, too, would like to end this night with a performance of sorts, if you wouldn't mind. I think I would mind. Who are you? You're a performer and paid. Please do not speak to me. (laughs) I will, but... What? (laughs) I said, please do not speak to me. I'm not afraid of your poultry tricks. Where are you from? Aysen? Wherever I want to be from, do we need to step outside? (laughs) I mean, when we are outside, this is a courtyard. I mean, outside of this courtyard. (laughs) That would be inside, you barbarian. Lena has fully backed up at this point. She cannot... (laughs) But she's not pretending to know Nostroy or anything. She's like, nope. <laughs> Sigurd is going to whisper in her ear. Nostroy is going to kill that man, isn't he? Isn't he? he might kill someone. I'm not sure who. <laughs> Nostroy looks at him and goes, Please carry on with your performance. I hope it helps you leave quickly. Don't worry. I do not plan on sticking around long after. Don't. <laughs> Too long has this city been under siege. It has ruined the countryside. The fine grapes of Oratoros have dried up. Instead of wine, we have rivers of blood. But have no fear. The sorcerers of Porte are here. We are here to fix this blight upon the land. And with that, he pulls out his knife. We have found a way to get rid of all of Oratrios' problems. We can use our magic to wipe Oratrios off the map. (laughs) What? And with that, he slashes his knife, and you see multiple other people who, like, in the serving staff, pull out knives and slash in unison with him. And a giant rip, similar to what Lena saw earlier, appears in the sky, covering all of Aratrios and having that red crackling out from it. Nostroy and Cormac, you hear the most blood-curdling, horrible scream you've ever heard in your life. 
Only us? Only you guys. Can I do, like, a notice? Oh, is that because we're magic and technically Sigurd isn't magic? Like, Sigurd isn't magic. Sigurd has magic runes. Does that make sense? Do a scholarship, Caitlin. Yes. Sigurd is not magic. You two are magic. Oof. Gosh. Scholarship with wits? You can do wits. How is it the, this one time I should have just, I should have just started killing this guy immediately? <laughs> <laughs> Usually that's the wrong impulse. This time I was right. <laughs> uh, two successes. Do you want to roll scholarship, Nostra? Uh, n- well, no, <laughs> because it's a zero. I had a yeah. zero too. <laughs> oh, okay. Then I'll just roll wits and a zero. You get a plus one because your first time rolling scholarship. Well, heck, man, two successes. Nice. All right. So you guys are able to like, what is happening here? is you guys have heard stories, travel enough to remember that Porte sorcery is very hard on the world. It is not natural like your guys' magic in the same way. Cody's is a gift from a god. Kaelin's is the gift, or not Cody's. Nostra's is a gift from a weird deity. Cormix is from fairy folk. Porte is just literally ripping the world asunder. You are cutting holes in the fabric of reality to link two points together. A cut this large is horrible and terrible, and you guys feel the world screaming from it. I think Nostra is going to try to kill this guy, like, just <gasps> immediately. Um, make a roll? Um, you got one shot. Because, I mean, like, right, he's not really, like... He's just done something that's, like, outwardly aggressive to the whole world, right? Like, this isn't, like, murder in cold blood. Yeah. And threaten to wipe Aratrios off the map. Like, Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah, I feel like this is, like, pretty acceptable to try to be like, you're dying. Yeah. No, he's terrible. And, like, yeah, no, trying to kill him is not the wrong impulse. I'm not like, no, don't kill my nice NPC. Can I, even as somebody who's not magic, I feel like I can understand that this is very wrong. Um, can I look for Catalina for fake Alina and see what, like, can I, can I like try to gauge what she's thinking right now? Make a notice, Lena. <laughs> okay. I just, I want you to know that I rolled two tens out of that pile of dice. I can reroll one dice. I rerolled that and I rolled another 10, <laughs> which brings me up to one, two, three, four, five successes. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> Holy cow. I was gonna go help Nostroy, but maybe I don't need to. <laughs> Notice and wits? Two raises. Okay. Cormac and Sigrether, you have a moment to act. Um, I think, like, Cormac, like, hearing this scream, hearing this guy threaten all of Aratrios, I think Cormac's gonna run up to attack him. Okay. Can I roll that? Yes. Okay. I'm doing finesse and weaponry. Okay. Heck yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. How many ones did you roll? Three. <laughs> Oof. Oof. The opposite of Nostra's roll right. where you rolled One, three tens. Two. Three successes. Okay. Uh, Sigurther. So I did not hear the scream. I just see these tears in reality. Yes. Ha, ha, so I know you just explained it to like, explained it to the two that rolled scholarship. Do I need to roll something to guess what this is to know what this is um sure why not you know some magic that is just one success or one race it's bad this is bad okay then you 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 know it like you're not like oh like i don't know what this is like you're like i don't know what this is but this is magic and it does not seem good okay then yeah and seeing cormac run into help and nostri already fighting yeah i guess she'll try to try to help all right uh roll an attack is this how we make your game really short, Zach? We'll see. <laughs> Zach's like, I need to get rid of a faction. <laughs> um, we can talk later about my thoughts. <laughs> so, is he still using the knife to cut this rift, or is it already done? I actually don't know if that matters. I think what Sigurdur is trying to do is knock that knife out of his hand. Okay. So, I'm, I'm trying to use finesse and weaponry. Okay. That is, yes, I I agree. Oh, hey, do I get a hero point? Because I'm setting my eyes on something a site, or on a f- site 
few, if any, Theans have ever seen before. Yes. Awesome. I mean, no one has seen this before. Right. That's what I was thinking. You got a hero point. You did it, Caitlin. I did it. I played the game. I can't believe you haven't used that to try to get a point from, like, Catalina. Like, she's the most beautiful thing. <laughs> no, because I knew you'd veto it. <laughs> I would, in a heartbeat, since you've seen her for the last three years every right. day. I-, I think I should also get a hero point, because if I give in to grudges and that leads me to trouble, then I get a hero point, which <laughs> I feel like I have a grudge against this guy, and now I'm murdering him. <laughs> I don't think he has a grudge. I think he actively insulted you. Yeah, now I have a grudge. <laughs> If he fight, if he lives, next time you fight him, it's a grudge. <laughs> I can hold a grudge after thirty seconds of being insulted. That's enough for me to have a grudge. <laughs> I mean, didn't the whole thing with Miguel like wasn't that kind of a grudge? Well, that's yeah, but you know. Anyway, I have I have six raises. <laughs> Dang! Thanks to that rank four perk of fifteen, uh, 15 sets of fifteen or two raises, I managed to make three sets of fifteen. Almost exactly. Murdernated Porte. Wow. I do really appreciate that this guy was talking real big, and then it's like fireball to the face, axed in half. <laughs> no, try. I'm just trying to knock the. I'm just trying to knock the sword out of his hand for now. So here's the issue: Vinny rolled six successes on knocking a knife out of a guy's hand, and like the way that that's going to work with an axe is like. Vinny lopped no, his. I don't have my. I don't. I don't have my axes. I have that fencing sword. Oh, that's true. Oh, you do. Basically, like, you're, like... I think you slice his fingers off. Yeah, like... So, the way this works, I will describe the picture. This guy does this horrible thing. You see, like, him, like, like proudly looking at it for a moment as... Peripherally, you notice all of these other sorcerers that were in hiding, opening up portals and walking through and getting out of here. Like, they're... They're teleporting away. He takes a pause for a second to smile and look at everyone and be like, I have done the thing. You know, I have done what could not be done. And he turns and he sees Nostroy as a fireball just hits him in his face. And he's like stumbling a little bit backwards. And then there's this Irish bloke like stabbing him (laughs) as much as he can. And then he's just like, 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 he's like, okay, I can get out of this. This It's fine. Like, I'm really hurt. But we can fix this. I got my knife. And then, like, his hand's cut off, and he's like, well, (laughs) as he is just beaten, and I'm going to say he dies. Oh, shoot. Wait. Okay. Hang on. Now, this is pretty grim. (laughs) I still want to have done that. But in that moment where I realize his hand is cut off and he can't escape, can I heal him back to stable? (laughs) I'll let you decide. Okay, so Caitlin, you got how many? You got two. I got three, I believe. All right, I can heal one critical wound, is what the text says. Yeah, and I, I also want to point out, I was specifically not trying to cut his hand off. I wanted to knock the knife out of his hand. I mean, cutting his hand off. Well, I feel like my six successes could be that I don't like. Kill him. Well, but I was specifically trying to kill him. Okay. <laughs> two people were trying to kill him, and you took away his way to escape, Vinny, is what you did. Okay. Like, two people, like, because how many, well, how many wounds did you cause, Cody? I, I did five successes. <laughs> okay, like, here's how, okay, like, here's the thing. No, you cannot heal him. Do you want to know why? <laughs> Take it. That's fair. That's fair. I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys did way too much damage in one round, like. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> you guys, like, I cast Meteor Strike and all of them hit this guy for max damage. Can I heal him? No, he is dead. <laughs> he ceased. He no longer has a head. <laughs> right, you're like, I can heal him. And you get up to him and you're like. There is nothing to heal. Elena, you notice as this happening, Catalina, the fake one. That's who you're looking at, right? Not Fake Alina, not. Correct. Fake Alina seems to not give a lot of emotion off. She is at least pretending to be a duchess where you're schooled on controlling your facial expressions. But for a sliver of a second, you see a slight smirk as he rips open the sky. And it is gone as fat, like, as soon as you blink, it's gone. Okay. Pandemonium ensues! No one is calm. Everyone is panicking. There is a mad exodus. People are freaking out. However, it should be noted, there is just a a giant tear in the sky. Nothing has happened yet. 
Like, it's not like you're being sucked into a black hole. The the cut is there. Is it still screaming? I love the idea that it is the whole time. Just like, ah! Just forever in me. It's, <laughs> Corbett's ears. It, it is. And from what you guys know, like, that is a cause of the magic, not because of, like, anything special about, like, any rip that they cause in reality is, would, would scream. Oh, so that's what we might have noticed had we been standing over there. We might have heard screaming. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Can I uh, rule that this is a ship and I can mend the ship? If you want to try power? to do something with your magic, if you want to try to do that, you can. Like, let me tell you, you're not, it's going to be tough. I guess I cannot repair critical hits. Does this count as a critical hit on reality? Can I heal one critical wound on the sky? <laughs> I mean, if you guys want to try to use your magic to do something that is physically not in the description of what your magic does, you guys can do it. I am charging you hero points for it, and <laughs> you will have to also roll dice. It doesn't just happen. No, I think, I think Cormac would, like, yell to Nostra, like... It's, can you can your magic do anything about this? It's really funny. So imagine the scene. It is quiet for everyone else. Why is it quiet? Well, there's pandemonium. There's pandemonium, yeah. Okay. I was thinking, but you you and Nostra hear loud yelling in your ears. Yeah, it's insane. There's pandemonium and a screaming <laughs> from the world. Did Lena see how he sealed it back up? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a good question. When he... Because his knife is still there. He's still on the side. Yes, because the knife is still there, and he did pull out a strawberry for her. You did. Do you want to try to recreate it? No, but uh, I I assume that she's still close enough to where Nyostroy is, so she's going to pick up the knife and uh make sure that she is close enough to him to go... I don't know if this will work because I, I don't get the whole magic thing, but he closed it up by doing this thing. <laughs> That's good. Can you hear the screaming? The constant no. screaming? Well, cool. I, no. I, all right. I don't know if that might be. I you think mean that's from the people? Huh? You mean from like everyone else? No, the, the sky screaming. It's okay. Keep the knife. I want to, I want to root through his pockets just like anything he has in his body. I'm taken. Not in, like, a, I'm trying to get money, but, like, if he has, like, a medallion or a book or a letter, anything like that is what I'm looking for. Any signet of his, like, guild, you know what I mean? Okay, um, make me a notice roll. I'm not good at this, am I? No, notice I'm okay at. And I'm gonna say that's wits. You were also saying something, Cormac. I'm sorry, I cut you off. You are saying something to Nostroy. I was going to ask him if he could do anything with his magic to fix the whole sky Well, thing. do that in character, because I think it would be I good. I did. I don't think I can, because all I can do is burn things and heal people's hands, but I've never tried to heal a sky before. Surprised you didn't ask to cauterize the sky. <laughs> well, I kind of did as a joke, but, you know, I, I, I did mean it as a joke. Um, I got two successes and one dice left over. He... I gotta think about the answer to this. Like, understand, I'm not looking for, like, gold, right? I'm I'm looking for, like, clues or something that he might have on his person. No, 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 I know, I know. Weirdly enough, he does not have anything specific that seems to be amplifying what he did on his person. Other than the knife. Other than the knife. Which just seems like a thing that they use for their ritual. Yeah, I guess, does the knife actually seem like it matters at all? It is a nice knife, but it is not a magic knife. Okay, I'm still going to keep it, but yeah. Yeah. It's a knife that... L it's not dissimilar from a performance knife for you. No, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. The the magic's with the, the wizard that we melted, not with the knife that he was carrying, unfortunately. Right. Okay, so probably trying to do the same action backwards that he did would not do anything because the knife... You you can try, and I can give you information if you want to try that, but... Mm. I have my magic detecting necklace. I don't know if it just is like, there's magic here, or if it's more specific than it that. It shows you auras of things. So okay, you, what would you, the aura tell me? If there's magic here. Does the knife have an aura? No, the knife does not have an aura. Okay. Okay, there we go, there we go. That, that. I'm sorry, I was not trying to be difficult there, I was trying to let you know that it's not just like, 
It's not a metal detector where it just beeps if you find magic, so it would be inconvenient. It, like, shows you where magic is. No, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. Mandy. As soon as Lena, like, passes off the knife, uh, she looks around for our Catalina. Can she find her in the pandemonium? Yes, but she is moving out. She's in a crowd, so if you want to get to her, you'd be leaving the courtyard and, like, joining the crowd. Do I see any of the Duke's Rebellion people? Yeah, you can see someone. They're at the back of the pack, so you could p- presumably get to them without having to get in the mob. Okay, yeah. So so Lena is going to grab one of them by the wrist and, like, get in really close to their ear. I need you to tail someone for me. They are not. They have not done anything wrong. Make sure they get home safe. This is what they, she looks like. And make, gives Catalina's current description. Yeah, they, they, the people that are here too are the people that you are more in control of. Yeah. Because you are internal guard. Yeah. And they do it without question. Like, they, they know who you are. They, they're like, understood, we'll, we'll see it done. Yeah. And like, start sweeping through the crowd. Just want to make sure she didn't, she doesn't get nabbed up in all of this. Good call. All right, anything else you guys want to do to this horrible, terrible sky? Not at the moment. All right. So this party seeps out. People quickly leave. The house is in disarray. And then it is quiet for two of you. (laughs) It is, for Nostroy and Cormac, it is still loud. It is quite loud. It is not as blood-curdling as it was initially. Like, there was... A specific amount of decibels louder it was. It has calmed down a little bit, but not enough to really be like, great, this is fixed. Right. Yeah, we're getting a migraine. Right. Like, you know, like, there's a child shrieking, and then there's a t- child throwing a tantrum, and it's like, at a certain point, they're still loud. Yeah, yeah. So you guys leave this party. You head back to your places. Um, where do you all want to go from here? I think we'd go back to the bakery, right? Mandy, are you heading back to the bakery or are you staying around? I think Lena would stay around for a little bit to make sure, like, because I am sure her mother and father are, like, freaking out. Um, and so, like, helping them calm down and, you know, not like physically picking things up like they have people to help them with that but kind of getting emotions under control um she's helping with that for a while so she's she's probably staying behind for a bit i think Nyostroy would wait for you like out in the street like hiding in an alley until you're like leaving basically okay i think sigrether would stay with lena because until we leave this party still bodyguarding fair so I don't know if Cormac should go back alone. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad idea, though, just to make sure that yeah, Catalina that Catalina gets back. That's true. Yeah, because yeah, even though I sent someone after, like, it's still. Yeah, we should make sure that that actually happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Cormac, you head back to the bakery and you're like, you look around, and you're like, Catalina's not here. And they're like, wait, where was she last? Like, where was she sleeping most recently? Oh, yeah, because she's been rotating between right. the catacombs. And right, the she's been yeah. being where she is needed. Um, so you end up back in the catacombs. And as you descend underground, for a, like you step down and it is quiet, or at least not loud. It is a level you can ignore as the screaming above you is dampened by all the rock and wet stone that is around in this deep, dank, dark cave. And by cave, I mean catacomb. Mm-hmm. Easily enough, you are able to find Catalina, but she seems both busy doing stuff and uninterested in talking to you after your fight. Okay. Unless you wanted to have a scene with her. Just making sure you got back. I'll let everyone know you're fine. Thanks. Tell them we'll need to meet soon when they get back. Like, we got to fix this. I don't want Oratrios to be... Whatever that thing's going to do to it. Agreed. Otherwise, I'll be figuring out the plan and having Magnus pray a lot, I guess. Yep, I definitely have him start doing that. All right, go get them. 
Lena, you console your parents who were very happy and are now very sad. The night was a smashing success until it was just a smashing. Yeah, and, and she's doing her best to reassure them, like, no, no, it's, it wasn't you. This is, this has nothing to do with, it. I'm sure everyone is not going to specifically think of it as your party messed things up. It's, <laughs> yeah, this guy, this asshole, it was, it's all him. It's not you. But yeah, so like, eventually they're consoled. It does not take you super long, but it still is an amount of time where, you know, like probably an hour where you're like picking up things nominally, mm-hmm. you know, like a nice vase was broken. So you're like, oh, I can't let mom see this. This was her favorite, you know, that kind of thing. While like consoling them when they are just like able to be consoled and not just upset. Yeah. And then you leave, you leave exit and see your grim companion in the alleyway. Uh, Yostroy walks up and goes, Magdalena, I I think that your family might need to flee. I think everyone's going to blame them for this and they're being set up. (sighs) Sorry, let me rewind. Fake Catalina knew who I was. Which I can then assume that she, she knows who everyone is. And is aware we are in the city messing with her, and I am guessing this was a play to screw specifically you and your family. Yeah, um... I'm starting to get that feeling, too. She seemed happy, I guess, that that sorcerer ripped the sky open. Fake Catalina did? Yeah. Oh, that is not good. <laughs> that I kind of thought she might be an ally, potentially, because she did not immediately kill me. But I am guessing that means that she is planning on um discrediting us rather than killing us, which is worse. But, yeah, I mean, not, like, believe me, like, look, I think your brother's trash and your parents are, eh, you know, whatever. I, I don't have any strong feelings one way or the other, but they didn't do this, I don't think. Um, no, but no, definitely would not have. Your mom sure did make sure that you had a really public, pleasant conversation with this guy, and she, like, paraded him around as a big deal, and then he, like, went and ripped the sky apart, so, you know. Honestly, uh, the fact that they did not, uh, the fact that I was being brought back without any kind of uh, needing me to repent or anything like that was kind of a red flag to me, so, uh... Do you think your parents, like, did they not just want their daughter back for the sake no, of... No, no, I think my parents... I don't think my parents had anything to do with this. Oh, you think that fake Catalina let I'm, you come sorry. back without repentance? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. The fact that yeah. Gelly and the, <clears throat> the... The fact that Gelly and Senor Santiago and, uh, I guess... Fake Lena were, did not require me to swear fealty. It was a that I was worried about that yeah. when he said that. I think that your parents are getting caught in a scuffle that maybe it would be best if they were simply no longer present for. See, that's a completely legitimate thing to say, Nostroy. But for coming from Nostroy, I'm like, whenever he says people not being present anymore, I'm like, nine times out of ten, he means murder. No, what Nostroy, like, low-key, me as a player, is sitting here going, like, we're going to turn around, we're going to go back to your house, and we are going to tell your parents, like, hey, you are going to get blamed for this, you're going to the catacombs. (laughs) Like, welcome to the rebellion, you just got your side chosen for you. (laughs) But I don't know, that feels a little strong to do without talking to the rest of the group. But that's where I'm at as a player. <laughs> How do they feel about werewolves and living with werewolves? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> Oh, like, man, watch, like, uh, Lena's dad just get really into being bros with the werewolves. Oh my gosh. How old are her parents? Probably like 60, 50, 60. Yeah. Yeah, how old are Yeah, how old are Lena and Miguel? They're like 30s, right? So 50-60. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, I am concerned for the safety of you and your family, which is kind of why I waited cuz I didn't didn't think that they would assassinate them like tonight, but it feels like it's on the table, you know. Oh, trust me, it's not my safety that I need to be worried about. 
Um, and Lena is gonna like just turn around and go straight back to her parents' house. All right, you go back in. They, your parents are there. Oh, what does do you want, to, darling? Um, she. I imagine they're probably like in a more private area of the house, like they're not in like the entrance hall or anything like that. Um, at this point of the night. And she's going to go around to all of the windows and all of the doors and make sure that they are shut. Did Nyostroy or Sigurther come with her? Um, if you didn't stop Nyostroy, he would, like, have come with you, but not, like, he would let you have a minute with your parents. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But unless you, like, told him, like, hey, I don't want you to follow me, he would be, like, Outside the door. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. And, and I think Sigurther's about the same, but she would follow you into the room because she's still your bodyguard. <laughs> gotcha. For the night. <laughs> um, Lena's going to turn to uh, Sigurther. Can you, I don't know if any of your rooms can do this, but can you see if there are any like listening spells or anything around the room? I can, I can take a look. Let me see what my runes can do. I like that. Okay. Would you consider a listening device an opportunity? <laughs> sure. Okay. For tonight. Then I need to find... I will say that. For tonight. For now. Well, because an, an opportunity is like an aspect. It's like that type of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you have like detect opportunity? Yeah, uh, destroy opportunity, basically. Oh! Okay, that feels... That feels maybe like that makes sense. But I guess that's, I guess the thing is I need to know that the opportunity exists. It says choose one opportunity in the current scene with you. That opportunity is destroyed, meaning no one can activate it. That feels kind of... <laughs> no, that feels fair. That feels fair. You could just do it as like a precaution. Okay. Um, so I'll be doing the the winter Stortmerk and the courage Letetmerk. So destroy that opportunity. And uh, I can choose another character in the scene with me. So I'll choose Lena. That character can immediately can uh, can immediately activate an opportunity without spending a raise. If there is any opportunities in the room. I don't know if there's any other opportunities, but th there's nothing else that really fits. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any opportunities. So with doing this, you find out there there are no listening devices, is what I will say. Like, it will be used up, but it's saying, like, there are no opportunities in the room that are listening to them. That's fine. And it costs me a hero point to use a rune, right? And that's how that works? Yes. Okay. So Lena makes sure that her parents are seated, and as soon as Sigrether has broken her runes, she turns to them. I understand this is not the most opportune time to speak to you about this, but there is a lot going on at the moment. And after tonight, my friends and I are very concerned for your safety. We have a place that you can go because I'm not entirely sure how much Gelly is going to be able to protect the family based on how tonight went. If you are willing, I would like to get you there tonight. I I thought you said that we would be safe. <laughs> when did I make that promise? <laughs> you said that you convinced them that they wouldn't be blamed before you left. Oh, I see. I, that was a promise from like way <sighs> but like earlier. No, 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 no. It was from like 20 minutes ago, and you're like, you're fine. No one will care. They're not going to blame you. And I come back in. Everyone blames you. We're leaving. <laughs> well, you, you know, uh, the the second I had, the, the as soon as I had the moment to uh, speak with people who saw the same thing as me and were able to see it from a different side, uh, I changed my mind. I think this is very serious at this point. Well, we we would prefer to be with Miguel, but he has not offered his assistance, so we will take you up on it. I mean, if you if you really really want, you can wait until the morning. But I am honestly scared that in the morning they're going to come by and arrest you because the Duchess was put in danger. Y you seem upset, and we will go with you, Magdalena. Are any of Cormac's? Spy boys, spy kids around. <laughs> I think they're gone. They're all gone. Okay. I, I think I think they're all probably gone. Okay. But they're good at getting out of dodge, and you know. Yeah. Okay. In that case, um, 
she'll help. I guess, um, no, we probably want the entire household because even people who are working there could be seen as a part of it and she wouldn't want any of them to be arrested either. I think she leaves it to her parents to kind of make like the announcement to people. Yeah, and you have a smaller household, so it's yeah, it, it, maybe a total of 10 people with your parents included yeah. and your siblings. Yeah. They, she helps everybody kind of get packed up. And then I think since Sagrather and Nyostroy are there, if it's only, if it's about 10 people, they split up into groups. And I think each, I think Sagrather and Nyostroy, as long as you guys are okay with this, uh, and Lena each get people down into the catacombs. Um, can I do one thing before we leave? I, I just want to get, like, really fine string, like, that would be, like, thread, right? Like, that you'd use for sewing. And just, like, wrap it around all the door handles and all the windows and stuff. So that way, if someone opens a window, it breaks the thread. Yes, you can do that. Because I'm, curi- I'm curious if people break in over the night. <laughs> it takes you some time to do that, but you enlist some help of the people that you're saving, and they, you get it done. And you all troop off in different directions with these small groups of people into the night under this weird sky that has a red glow to it even in the dark and we will end there hey wanderers thanks for listening we hope you enjoyed this episode of corsairs of castillo this game is being run in the 7th c second edition system if you want to hear more content from the wandering gamer network you can check us out at the wandering gamer network website we stream on Twitch with the username wandering underscore gamers, and you can follow us on Twitter at the WGN Podcast. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. All information about the music used can be found in the episode description. Until next time, wherever you wander, may you find your way home. <laughs>